Okay, well, hello everyone. It's uh, Renee Liao here back again today. And I um, wanted to do a really quick video today on a topic that I haven't had a chance to really talk in much depth before. Um, I have a lot of, you know, Fountain of Life videos, but not a video particularly talking about the ability of the Fountain of Life to really get absorbed into your body in a very quick manner. And so, uh, and this becomes a really important topic because a lot of people have been asking, you know, hey, Renee, how come uh, when I take Fountain of Life, I notice uh, the benefits of the product so quickly, whereas you know, even for, 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 uh, for myself, when I used to take different kind of products, you wouldn't really feel something particularly. Um, and so uh, this brings up a huge discussion today and just more of a uh, sort of FYI for people who are curious about why is felt uh, like uh, so effective. So to start off, what I thought would be the best idea is to talk about the biggest issues when it comes to trying to uh, buy uh, nutritional supplements in forms of pills or powders and so uh, typically uh, here's the biggest issues that you're gonna find and hopefully you can see my screen here so uh, here are the top five reasons why uh, your body if you are taking things like multivitamins or vitamins or pill forms um, why you don't really feel something per, per se um, in a quick amount of time number one you can see here that for the body to utilize the vitamins and minerals they must be released into the body in a timely manner, meaning they must disintegrate quickly enough. So in a study that they did with 49 well-known, you know, commercially available multivitamins that were either in a tablet pill form or a capsule form to determine they could release the contained uh, micronutrients within 20 uh, minute time period uh, for that absorption showed that of the 49 multivitamins study, about 25 of the 49 did not disintegrate in a proper time, meaning it kind of went in and kind of went out of your system. The second issue, of course, is what they call bulking bombs, which is where this is another huge issue, is that many supplements contain excipients, binders, fillers, and flow agents that can be used to either make the ingredients stick together, bulk the products up to a convenient size, or to allow formulas to run smoothly through the manufacturer's machines. These can all contribute to the poor disintegration rates for tablet pills and capsules. So again, if you're taking a pill that you know is, is in a pill form, most likely they're going to contain one of these things here, making it harder to also uh, uh, absorb into your body. Next is the wax washouts. So have you noticed that some of the multivitamin tablets are shiny? That's because some companies coat their multivitamins with shellax, wax, and this long thing here, <laughs> which keeps the moisture out so they will have a longer shelf life. So while it's really good for the multivitamin uh, company's bottom line, it is not good for you. Uh, these coatings can decrease the solubility of a multivitamin tablet or capsule, reducing its ability to readily disintegrate as well. Fourth issue is that some people just have a hard time taking pills. Uh, actually, 40% have a hard time swallowing. Not just, you know, sometimes it could be more than one pill, could be like four or five pills, more than one or two times per day. Uh, some also do have, you know, specific conditions that make pill forms a bad choice for them as well. And, you know, this is a study on like a thousand people and showed that, you know, majority of them basically just, it's just too much hassle to basically take. Um, and the fifth reason is basically sugar and corn syrup cause stalemates. So would you believe that some of the manufacturers actually add sweeteners to pills to make them more appetizing? It's true. And it's even worse uh, in many of the chewable gummy and liquid vitamins on the market. So not only are they uh, commonly uh, GMO, so genetically modified, uh, they can cause insulin spikes that cause weight gain, but they also block micronutrients for being absorbed into the body as well. Uh, in the case of high fructose corn syrup, can contribute to deficiencies in chromium, magnesium, zinc, and copper, while the sugar blocks absorption of vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium. So, uh, again, just a quick FYI, I figured that a lot of people didn't really ever think about these kind of things, but I thought it's really interesting to share this article again on why it's important to, uh, to, to find a proper supplement that doesn't necessarily have these particular issues. So what's really cool I want to show you guys today is actually a, a study that you can find on PubMed. So PubMed is basically the U.S. National Library of Medicine. I just typed in um, the lignin in Fountain of Life, which is a 7 hydroxymatoricinol and I typed in bioavailability. Now, what is bioavailability? Really quickly, uh, 
just so you understand what that is, because we're going to talk about today. Bioavailability, basically, uh, in science terms, B, A, or F, is basically uh, the percentage of what you're taking that can reach your system, basically. So, uh, in short, if medication is administered intravenously, for example, through a syringe or directly into your veins, its bioavailability is 100%, because 100% of that product got into your bloodstream. So that's a key thing, because for all of these products to work, they must get into our bloodstream. So when you eat foods, you eat the vitamins or the pills, whatever it is, it's through the, not the large intestine, but it's through the small intestine where it gets absorbed into the bloodstream. So again, we, in this case here, 100% means that all of it is getting into the bloodstream, okay? So when it comes to uh, dietary supplements, herbs and other nutri uh, nutrients, uh, in which usually case it's oral, by availability, availability generally means the quantity or fraction of the ingested dose that is absorbed. So again, how much got into your body. So in this study of 7-hydroxymetoricinol with bioavailability, I was just blown away uh, when this was shown to me uh, and when I looked at this, because it's going down here, I won't get to a lot of the, uh, the science stuff, but just to kind of summarize what the findings were is, you can see here that, uh, again, the pharmacokinetic uh, is just the studies of uh, uh, the drug or the, the substance you're taking, how much of it has an impact on bioavailability, how much is absorbed, that kind of stuff too. So the pharmacokinetic profile of plasma 7-HMR, which is a 7 hydroxymetoricinol okay, um, after taking 36 milligrams of this 7-HMR, CMAX was reached one hour after administration. So CMAX just refers to the maximum concentration that got into basically your, 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 your body. Um, and, but the key word here is plasma. And sometimes we hear what plasma really quickly. What plasma is, is blood plasma is the yellowish liquid component of blood that holds the blood cells in whole blood in suspension. So it's basically the liquid part of the blood that carries cells and proteins throughout the body. It makes up about 55% of the total's body's total blood volume. So again, uh, it is mostly you know, made, up, made up of water with a few other things too. And it plays a vital role uh, in, of course, because it's part of your blood basically, but it plays a vital role in, in you know, uh, electrolyte concentration balancing and preventing your body from infection and other blood disorders. So basically it's the stuff that's inside your blood. Uh, another simple way of looking at it is uh, basically it's the it's single largest component of human blood. Again, comprising about 55%, contains water, cells, enzymes, antibodies, and other proteins. So the key thing is, uh, you know, it's basically to see uh, how much of this product is getting into your blood. Again, the bioavailability, but it's related to, of course, plasma. So in short, a really cool thing that I was reading about Fountain of Life is within one hour, this is, um, this is remarkable, in one hour after taking this uh, 7-HMR, it uh, the CMAC, which is again the maximum concentration of the product, was reached just one hour. So that is amazing to see that uh, this product, again, when taking it sublingually under the tongue, it basically gets into your bloodstream within one hour. Now, of course, the fountain of life, the way I take it, I put it under the tongue. I also swirl it around my gums because it's great for the gums. I might leave it uh, a bit in my throat area before I swallow it because it's great for the throat as well too. But you will eventually swallow the rest of it, right? So uh, the cool thing is that uh, uh, even after 24 hours, uh, based upon what you had swallowed, you can see here that over the next 24 hours, um, uh, you can see that it's still rising. So you can see here that the uh, plasma ENL which is the interlactone um, of the lignans was reached 24 hours after again taking that amount. So, in other words, when you take it, you know, sublingually in one hour, it's you know into the bloodstream, and the rest that you swallow, because again, it's going through that dis different uh, uh, method of entering the body. But still, within 24 hours, you have another peak, and that's why a lot of people now are taking Fountain of Life actually two or three times per day because you want to keep that constant level of of, of the, um, the antioxidants in your body. So it's really, really amazing. Uh, in this quick diagram here, it just showed over a course of uh, four weeks here, okay? 
uh, that the increase um, of the 7-HMR, um, you know, went up by 191%, which is fantastic. So in fact, to be specific, at the eight week mark line, the eight weeks um, from baseline, uh, it went up by about 1900% uh, for the people that had the higher dosage of it. And people that had a bit less had 12 months. But still, that's a, that's a huge significant increase, of course, of this product. I mean, it's actually, it's actually working in your body. Um, and you can see here again, just more diagrams talking about over, over four weeks and that kind of stuff too. So uh, and, and in short, this particular study was, talk, was, was, in, was uh, for uh, hot flashes. And the cool thing in, in summary was that hot flashes is uh, decreased by 55% from baseline starting point to four weeks, and then uh, by 50% uh, by the eighth week. So in short, uh, it just means that it's really working. And so I thought this would be a really important video uh, just to talk about. Um, I'm gonna put the link if you want to go over this actual research on, on PubMed uh, directly. Uh, but I decided it's really cool because one of the biggest things that, uh, that I think is important when you're deciding what kind of a supplement should I be taking when it comes to antioxidants, you definitely want to find one that, uh, for the money that you're spending, that actually gets into your, your plasma, your, into, which is into your blood, and to make sure that uh, it's, it's in a format that is highly bioavailable. Uh, and again, the fountain of life, because again, there's no, the key things here about fountain of life, going back to my, this one over here, we don't have these issues. Um, one, again, it's not in a pill form or capsule form, it is in a liquid form. Uh, and literally, again, you saw from research how quickly it gets into the plasma in the blood. Uh, again, we don't have these bulking bombs issues. There's no, there's no, uh, you know, there's no binders. There's no fillers. Uh, there's nothing that can basically uh, uh, cause this not to be absorbed easier by your body. Again, there's no weird shiny thing. You know, there's no, so there's no tablet. So there's no, no need for wax washouts. Uh, again, it's not a pill. And, um, you know, so again, uh, this website, they do talk about trying to find, you know, I guess, powder versions. Uh, so you know, take a powder versus taking the uh, tablets, uh, look at the ingredients. And but again, we don't have a powder or a, or a pill issue. It's already in a liquid form that they, again, I just showed you the research is into your body in one hour. So I hope this video has helped you guys understand uh, why Fountain of Life is so powerful, why people see uh, such immediate effects because of the, again, the anti-inflammatory, uh, it really starts to work with any kind of body pains like arthritis, uh, gout, um, type 2 diabetes, those kind of things that are inflammation related, uh, chronic pain, migraines. Um, and again, it's just a wonderful product. So that being said, hope you enjoyed the video and make sure you do subscribe uh, to my channel for more future videos and have a great day. See you guys later. Bye-bye.